Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Ryan Kelly and I'm going to be hosting another episode of Know Your Bosses. Know Your Bosses, if you're not aware, is a show where I'll review some of the most classic bosses to the lesser known ones. I'll rank them based on their difficulty, creativity, appearance, and fighting style. In the end, the boss will get a ranking from 1, avoid the fight, to 10, pursue the fight. So now that I've quickly gone over the rules, we can talk about the boss we'll be fighting today. Today I'm going to be discussing... Location. The Ravenous Octoma is located in the 4th World Splatoon single player mode, Hero Mode. In order to be able to access the boss, you'll need to have gotten all the Zapfish from stage 16 to stage 21. Once you've done this, you'll have access to the boss kettle that has Octoma in it. The boss kettle is located in the center of the 4th World, and you have to travel through the ink rails in order to get to it. Once you're at the boss kettle, all you have to do is just enter it like you would a normal level. Boss Information. The Ravenous Octoma is the fourth boss of Splatoon and is one of the five Great Octo Weapons. According to the 13th Sunken Scroll, these Great Octo Weapons were used by the Octarians during the Great Turf War. Interestingly enough, these Great Octo Weapons were actually defeated during this war. So whenever you get to one of the Great Octo Weapons and you're about to fight it, you'll see them getting powered by a Zapfish. Now what's cool about this is the fact that this isn't the weapon getting activated like I had previously thought. It's actually the weapon getting revived from previous battles. The Octomaw stands out from the other great Octo weapons in the game because you can actually see that it's been repaired since the war. You can tell that this is the case because you can see that it's been roughly reinforced with scrap metal. Now the Octomaw is pretty interesting when it comes to giving information about the Great Turf War, but it's also very interesting because it has some very special features with its fight and the stage at its end. The stage is riddled with signs that tell you not to use the Splat Bomb on the Octomaw, which is interesting because it just so happens that you're actually supposed to use the Splat Bombs in order to defeat it. And the Octarians thought that I wouldn't see through their little trap. Well, it's a good thing that I have the internet to help me expose the Octarians. And finally, the coolest thing about the Octoma is the fact that if you're able to throw a seeker into its mouth while it's smiling, then you'll activate some hidden dialogue from Agent 1 and 2 that will appear while you're fighting the boss. Strategy The Ravenous Octoma is a three-phased boss, just like the previous great Octo weapons. The phases are broken up by every time you blow the tentacle up with ink. The first phase it'll have white teeth, the second phase it'll have silver teeth, and the final phase it'll have golden teeth. Each set of teeth is harder to break than the last. This is important to know because certain parts of the fight will get harder and require you to kind of change your strategy up a little bit, depending on each set of teeth. Anyway, let's talk about the fight itself. The fight will begin by it swimming towards you and then enclosing you in its teeth. In order to get out of its mouth, all you'll need to do is shoot one or two of the teeth and then swim through the ink to get outside of its mouth. Now, I wouldn't recommend only shooting one or two of its teeth in this particular phase of the fight because of how weak the white teeth are. I will recommend that you try to shoot as many teeth as you can by spinning around and spamming the fire button, and then escape from its mouth. Once you've successfully escaped from its mouth, it will shoot out of the ink and it will smile at you. This is your chance to do exactly what the sign told you not to do. You must launch a splat bomb into its mouth. Now, if you didn't break enough teeth, then it might be difficult to shoot the splat bomb in its mouth because there won't be a big enough gap. 
So if you didn't shoot enough teeth earlier, then you'll have another chance to shoot its teeth while it's smiling, but you might miss the chance to shoot a splat bomb in its mouth. If you're not able to get the splat bomb in its mouth in time, then it'll go back to where it was at the start of the fight and send any remaining teeth towards you. The teeth will shoot rapid fire ink at you. This is your chance to break as many teeth as you can because the ink that it shoots can be easily avoided by hiding underneath one or two of its teeth. After a minute or so, the teeth will go back to the Octoma, and then it will swim towards you again and trap you in its mouth. All you gotta do is escape just like you did the last time, and then you will get another chance to throw a splat bomb into its mouth. At this point, there should be no teeth, so it shouldn't be too hard to throw a bomb in its mouth. After you throw the bomb in its mouth, it will explode and then it will expose its tentacle. Once this happens, make sure to hit it as many times as you can so that it will explode. Once you hit the tentacle enough and it explodes, the second phase will start. The second and third phase play out just like the first phase does, but the teeth will get stronger by each phase. So when you're trapped in its teeth for the second phase, make sure that you only go for three or four of its teeth. And for the third phase, make sure to only go for one or two of its teeth, instead of going for as many as you can just like you did in the first phase, because you might get swallowed up and lose a life if you're not careful. So that's the only thing different about the second and third phase. Other than that, do everything else exactly like you did in the first phase. So once you have gotten through the second and third phase, you will have successfully taken out the Ravenous Octoma. Rewards After defeating the Ravenous Octoma, you will get the Zatfish that powered it as well as a sunken scroll. Once you collect the Zatfish, you'll activate some dialogue with Agent 1 and 2 as well as the final boss in the game. And don't worry, we'll get to him, but just not in this video. Now as for the sunken scroll, it's actually not just any ordinary sunken scroll. This scroll is actually blueprints to a weapon that you can use while playing the game's multiplayer. The weapon that you get from this blueprint is the new Squiffer. The new Squiffer is a type of charger weapon that is related to the classic and the French Squiffer. In order to use this weapon, you have to be level 11 and you gotta have about 4,500 coins in order to be able to buy it. That is so messed up that we have to pay for this weapon. I mean, we beat the Octoma and we found the blueprint for it. I mean, it's only fair that we can use this weapon for free since we basically told the guy how to make it, but it's whatever. I don't really play the multiplayer. Final thoughts. In this section of the video, I'll be talking about how the gameplay, design, difficulty, fun factor, and creativity weigh in on my opinion on whether I think a boss is good or not. Anyway, now that we've gotten that all out of the way, let's start this section. The Ravenous Octomoth's fight is a very active fight. You always have to be quick and on the move because if you stand still for too long, you'll be dead. And this fight makes sure that you're good at managing ink because the splat bombs require a good amount of ink and if you don't have enough, then you'll miss your chance to throw it in the Octomoth's mouth. Speaking of the splat bomb, the Octomoth is actually a pretty unique boss from the previous great Octo weapons because it's the only one that requires you to use the splat bomb. So the gameplay for this boss is pretty good for the most part. The only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that the second and third phase don't add any new attacks or features with the fight. It makes the fight feel a little bit repetitious, which is never a good feature for a boss to have. Although the gameplay is pretty good, the design isn't that great when compared to the other bosses in the game. The previous bosses were very quirky and had some very peculiar design choices, and that's what made them so special. The Octoma, on the other hand, feels more bland because it just has a fish-like design. I mean, just look at the second boss in the game. You can't find another boss that looks like this thing because it's just so weird. Now, the Octomoth's fight is pretty fun, but it's pretty easy once you know how to beat it. All you have to do is just hit its teeth, throw a bomb in its mouth, and then blow up the tentacle. That's it. I mean, it only has two attacks, and one of those attacks you won't even see unless you miss your chance to throw the bomb in its mouth on the first try. And last, but certainly not least, the Octoma is actually a pretty creative boss, although I might not have made it sound like it is. All of the bosses from Splatoon are pretty creative because they all have ridiculous ways of defeating them. Having to break its teeth and then throwing a bomb into the boss's mouth and then covering it in ink is a pretty odd way of beating it. I mean, this boss does come from Splatoon after all. So, with all that in mind, my score for the Ravenous Octoma is... a 6 out of 10. So, what do you think about this boss? Do you think this boss deserves a higher or lower ranking? Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video or not. 
Also, make sure to click the like button if you liked the video and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Ryan Kelly, and I will see you in the next episode of Know Your Bosses.